Last night, Iran attacked Israel with over 300 missiles and drones. Israel, together with their allies, managed to shoot down the mass majority of them. I think over 99% of them were shot down. But now all eyes are on Israel as they decide what to do next and how they're going to retaliate. Today, I'm speaking to political commentator and live streamer Destiny to discuss this. Welcome, Destiny. Hey, what's up? So uh, let's, talk, let's talk about what happened in Iran. So I think we actually need to go back two weeks to properly discuss this. So on the 1st of April, um, Israel was, was reportedly Israel, but there was an attack on um, an Iran, an embassy, Iran's embassy in uh, Damascus, which is in Syria, right, like I said, widely reported and believed to be Israel. Um, was that Israel? If there was Israel, is that illegal and is that an act of war? Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so a few things. Um, I... I don't know how much this matters because I don't know the international regulations on it, but technically Israel, I don't believe attacked the embassy in Syria. I think they attacked the consulate. Um, yeah, the consulate, I don't yeah, know how, yeah. I don't know how much the difference here matters, but also I don't know uh, if attacks between like Israel and Syria, when we talk about like a cause for war, like Syria doesn't even recognize Israel as a state. These two countries obviously hate each other. Iran obviously doesn't like Israel either. So in terms of like Israel attacking into Syria, um, I, I don't know if the feeling is like, oh my God, like tensions are deteriorating. Like there is no relationship here between these two countries. Again, Syria doesn't even recognize Israel exists. So I think Israel had uh, information or felt like it had information that there were a bunch of, um, I think Quds Force commanders, which are like the mobile wing of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC from Iran. Um, and they felt like these people were intimately involved with the, I think the plotting and the or at least the plotting, the training for the October 7th attack. So Israel thought they had a hit there. They did their attack. And then obviously Iran has to respond because otherwise they look weak or crazy. So they've been saying for weeks, like, we're going to get you. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. This attack was coming. The attack has happened now. Um, I think there might have been one casualty, like one serious injury. Uh, and that's about it. And Iran said, okay, we're good. And I think now Israel and the U.S. are playing a game publicly where Israel's like, we're going to get you. And Israel's like, don't hold me back. And the U.S. is like, "Okay, well, don't do it anymore. And then eventually it's like, well, you know, we did our thing and we defended against all your missiles. So we actually won this. And Iran will say, well, we struck you with so many missiles and we proved we can do it. And everything will go back to normal. That's my take on everything. But well, yeah, I mean, that was a quick take. Uh, I I mean, that that makes sense, really. Uh, But the, the. I mean, first of all, I was just looking at the missiles. Just last night when I saw the missiles, I, I, I thought it was crazy how small how small the attack was. When I was in Israel last week, as soon as I got into Israel, and the, as soon as I got in, I went into a taxi, and the taxi taxi driver told me, "You've got to watch out for the next week. There's going to be an attack on uh, attack by Iran." And everyone was just so cautious the whole time. There's going to be an attack. There's going to be an attack. And then this happens. It feels like after all that build up, it's just nothing really. It's, it the... wasn't much. Yeah, it's it's funny now, like having done all the historical research in the region, I, I think that like the saber rattling is important. You have to message to your people that like, hey, look, like they did a bad thing to us and we're really going to get them. Um, and Iran has done this before with the United States as well. When we killed Soleimani, did, they did the same thing, except I think they accidentally blew up one of their own planes, unfortunately. I shouldn't laugh at that. Actually, that was a tragic accident. Um, but the... Um, yeah, I mean, like they have to save a rattle to show that they're not going to tolerate when their people are attacked and they've got to send a message to Israel and they're going to attack. Um, but I mean, like... Iran isn't really trying to do a massively escalatory strike that's going to kill hundreds of Israeli people because then that would invite Israeli counterattacks and really nobody wants that. Like people are comfortable right now in the kind of the proxy warfare area that they're in. Uh, Iran likes to support their uh, foreign proxies, you know, Hezbollah, whatever groups they have in Syria, uh, Hamas. And Israel probably more prefers a contained conflict that's not spiraling out of control because there's just too many players in the region that already don't look favorably upon Israel. So I feel like any escalation is probably not going to be very favorable to them. And the United States is already like, we're on the verge of reelection. Biden doesn't really want Netanyahu and Israel doing crazy shit. So I don't think it's really in anybody's interest here to continue to escalate things. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, so you're, say, you're saying all of that, but at the end of the day, you look at Iran's attack really. And it's just for, for me, I, I, it's, and I laugh at it. I know they have to do it to prove to their people that, okay, we're going to strike back. But w- was it one person was injured, and that, that's very sad that one person too many. But then like the a day, Bedouin I, child or something, yeah, a little yeah, girl, I think seven in, or ten. Some very old. very serious condition now, exactly. Uh, but after all of that, after all this week, so two weeks of just we're going to attack you, we're going to attack you, and after all of that, it's just this. It's, it feels to me almost like an embarrassment. I mean, it's it's not an embarrassment. It's it's. It's all it's all purposeful, right? This is like the theater of um, I think politics is Iran has to strike back, otherwise, what you can just kill Iranian 
military people with no repercussion and they have to, sh and the, the government needs legitimacy amongst its people. We can't be hit by Israel and not respond that it would be uh, horrible. Uh, but the attack can't be so huge that it invites an Israeli response because I don't think Iran, um, I, I, I'm admittedly not as informed on their like local military powers, but I don't know if Iran is like ready for like an actual full scale war between it and any other country, um, especially if other people like Saudi Arabia were to get involved. Um, so yeah, it, it just has to be like, a, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. And then they did their attacks and it wasn't like a huge civilian casualty event or anything like that. And then now everybody can kind of walk away saying that they've done what they've done. Iran proved that they could strike into the heart of Israel from their own territory and they stricken fear into the heart of Israel. I think I saw it was either Al Jazeera or somebody was publishing headlines where Iran was like, Israel is in a total state of disarray right now. And Israel gets to go, well, actually, we blocked almost all of the attack. And you better believe we'd come after you if it wasn't for Biden holding us back. And then everybody gets to walk away with their, their pride and their ego intact, basically. So yeah, that's that's the, the the big point is that if they stop now, then I think Israel is able to walk away with their pride and say, "Listen, we easily managed to stop this attack. It was a nothing attack. We managed to stop it. We've got mm -hmm. a strong force. Iran managed." To, but it, will that happen? Is do you actually think Israel's not going to attack back? They can't. They it would be the stupidest thing ever because if you look at what actually happened, it is a massive W for Israel. The trade off was they got to strike and kill. I think it was two civilians and 12 military commander-esque people that got killed in their strikes in Syria. And then the Iranian counter response, and Iran has said they're done now. They, they, they're done. They said, okay, that's it. Um, killed nobody. And maybe one person, depending on how our condition plays out in the hospital, they got to prove that they're, uh, you know, they've got their deterrence capability. They've got to, they saw their Iron Dome or their Arrow of fucking David or whatever they call their, all their different missile defense systems. Like it's just a massive W strategically for Israel. And in terms of PR, I think it's fine. They can walk away and everybody's like, okay, here. Well, I, I think Israel comes out really good here. But if Israel starts escalating or doing weird shit, I don't know why. It just doesn't serve them at all. There's no point for it. I mean, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you, but I, I'm not sure. I think you, you've got to remember you're talking to Israel, which is constantly in a state of war, so they've got a different mindset about a lot of this. Um, also, I mean, I was just reading out some quotes. So, for example, President Herzog, one of the most moderate people probably in, in the government, he said, he went on Sky News, he said, this is like a real war. I mean, this is a declaration of war about last night. So that's President Herzog saying it. It's not just anyone saying that. It is so, just I mean, anyone. No, Israeli president has no power. He doesn't do anything. That's just, his role no, is literally he, to, yeah. He doesn't have any power. He's more of, like, you're right. He doesn't have any power. But at the end of the day, for him to say something like this, that means quite so. I mean, Ben Gavir, of course, said something. He said, we need a crushing attack against them back. Mm -hmm. But that's Ben Gavir, and we expect Ben Gavir to almost say something like that. Um, he's quite he's the security minister. But for President Herzog to say that, that's quite a, quite a statement. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Man, uh, these clips are going to look real bad if I'm wrong. So <laughs> I'm going to DMCA your channel and delete them off from the internet if <laughs> it ends up escalating to full on war. But I just strategically, like Israel just won this trade so hard. Like, it's just so good for Israel. They got their strike. They blocked the incoming attack. Like, they're good. Uh, Iran said they're not going to do anything else. They've already like made that statement. I don't think they would. They uh, telegraphed this attack really hard for like two weeks showing that, you know, we're playing by the rules. But I th I couldn't find the article. I tried to find it, but I thought that it even said that um, they were only going to do one thing. Or I think they made a statement that like, we don't plan to go further than this. Like they were literally setting the... Um, yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I saw that statement. As yeah, well. they were setting the limits of their military conduct before they even began. So... Yeah, I think Israel needs, Israel will make strong statements, you know, this is an act of war, this is disgusting, this is horrible, like, we're, we need to strike back or blah, blah, or something like that, maybe, but I, I don't think anything else, there shouldn't be any other military action from Israel at this point, there shouldn't be. Right. But okay, so let's say Israel doesn't doesn't attack back. So let's look at the other the other points to that. So is Iran directly attacking Israel? I mean, they've had a shadow war for the past. Like Iran's been funding uh, their proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, which has been attacking Israel. Um, Israel has been attacking Iran at times, never actually admitting it was them. So, for example, the consulate they, they didn't actually admit it was Israel, although it's widely believed and reported to be Israel. But this for this to be a direct confrontation could this really escalate a war in a couple of months? Not now, and make it more feasible for them to actually attack each other and open those barriers um i'm i could it i don't know i don't think so but we'll see iran seems to like to do things by proxy um it, hamas has like been utterly obliviated if that's even a word uh, obliterated in um in the gaza strip I, I don't know what um i just don't know if it would serve anybody for there to be like a full-scale war uh, for between iran and Israel. That, that's just that's the feeling I have. But yeah, who knows? 
Okay, so then, okay, so let's move on to the other point as well. So um, Biden refusing to get military involved. Do you think, I presume you think that's a really good thing and a very good strategic thing. Yeah, this is a slap fight between two other countries. There's absolutely no reason why the United States should ever be involved militarily at any point here. Again, just strong words. Um, I think Biden said as much. We have Israel's back uh, fully. We completely support the defense, the defense of Israel, uh, not the attacks <laughs> against Iran or anything. So, yeah. Um, and then just one last point. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure you saw about what uh, what happened the other week, which or not even the other week, I think it was yesterday, Iran kidnapped a boot on international waters, which had links to an Israeli owner as they kidnapped the boot. Um, I think it was also in response to what happened two weeks ago. So they're now currently holding hostage um, to the to people, which is from uh, the, the, the crew is uh, people compromised of um, Indian, Pakistani, Russian, um, Filipino, all different nationalities. Um, and they've also got actually the boat as well. What does it, can this not help escalate or well, not help, but can this not escalate the situation if they didn't give it back? Uh, maybe. I don't know anything about how, I don't know what the treatment is or how that hostage stuff is dealt with um, it, when it comes to like seizing ships and whatnot, because uh, unless I missed it, don't the Houthis still have a ship and like the full crew or whatever? I'm not. I thought there was at least one percent. ship that they had where they still have like the full crew. Uh, I don't know like what the international protocol is for how do you like release crews like because it seems like there hasn't been any movement on that. Is like nobody care or is there like negotiations or I have, I truly have no idea. I'm not sure what that. that yeah. So what happened but... after that? Really? So it's a good point. So what happened after that was there was a lot of outrage on. on... Uh, by like let's say Grant Shapps was a defense secretary in, in the UK or different defense secretaries in different positions around the world. Uh, but then, of course, what happened last night, within a couple of hours, this overshot what, uh, what, the, what they sent over, all those missiles really overshadowed everything. So it could have been breaking news, but I think the missile missiles really just took it over uh -huh. and, and took over the headlines, if that makes yeah. sense. But this is more of a lack of long... It's a bit like what happened on October 7th, which is what Hamas did on October 7th was horrific, but they kept hostages to make it long term. So they managed to, ha so if if the world cares about these hostages in this boat, in this crew, which I kind of hope they do, then it can, it can escalate things, unfortunately. It doesn't seem like there is as much interest in criticizing people like Iran. I, I don't fully understand why I need to figure that out, I guess. But um, yeah, I don't know how much people just don't seem to care as much. I don't. I don't know why. I can't, I can't answer that question. Uh, they, like they, the Houthi they, stuff they, was insane to me, and there are people that openly defend the Houthi stuff, like shooting like random ships or like capturing. But I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand how that works. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. Okay, brilliant. Um, there's. I'm just looking at Sky News right now. So there's an IDF media conference to take place shortly. So I guess we'll see from there. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thanks for having me.